Hello, Abnormal Investigations family. How are y'all doing? We had a great live tonight. We enjoy spending the time with you guys tonight and the catches that we had. Uh, haven't heard from Mike in a while. Hopefully, he'll be sending us some stuff in. But uh, until then, guys. Well, I've had a lot of you asking me how to join our Wide Open Adventures and uh, y'all wanting to do that to support Hunter and that really touches us that y'all want to join that to support Hunter because when he gets back he'll be on that show a lot with Logan and my family so I'm going to put the link to Wide Open Adventures in the description of this video all you'll have to do is click on it go subscribe and ring that bell as the kids say and you'll be joined up with us over there guys for some great family content and lives that's going to be coming up with some great recipes all right, guys, I got an encounter, and um, I think you're going to like it. It's out of Florida, so let's jump on into it. Twenty-three years have passed since that fateful night, but the memory remains vivid. I've only shared this experience with two people, my husband and son. To this day, I try to convince myself it was just my imagination, but the image remains etched in my mind. In the late 1990s, I was dating a guy who lived in Davie, Florida. Back then, Davie was rural with a bunch of many ranches and cattle grazing land. The Burger King in town still had hitching posts for horses. It was far a cry from suburban life I was accustomed to. One evening, I visited his home located down a dirt road off Griffin Road. His house sat on a couple of acres backing onto pasture land. The darkness was dark very dark out there than what I was used to in the city with no street bikes nearby as we pulled into the driveway the moon illuminated the yard allowing me to see the tree line separating his property from the adjacent cattle land I stayed in the car while he ran inside five minutes passed then another I grew annoyed watching him chat with his parents through the Florida room window I thought he'd just grab what he needed and return. The silence was oppressive, punctuated only by crickets and the occasional hoot of an owl. I felt uneasy, my fear of the dark simmering just below the surface. It's an unexpected encounter is what I kept thinking. Am I going to have an unexpected encounter? Just as I decided to confront his mother, I noticed a tree shaking near the tree line. I thought it was a cow breaking through the fence, but then I saw it. It was a wolf on two legs, no doubt. It stood at least seven feet tall, but it was pure white, and it was built like a man covered in fur with a wolf's head. Its eyes, the way they reflected the yellow in the yard light, almost like they were lit up. I froze, paralyzed with fear. My mind struggled to comprehend what I was seeing. The creature sniffed the air as if it was searching for a scent. I wondered if it had detected me. Trapped, I debated whether to seek to safety in the house or to stay in the car. My heart racing, I weighed my options. Should I honk the horn to scare it away or make it dash for the house? Before I could decide, the werewolf dropped to all fours and it loped away. I shook uncontrollably. My boyfriend returned to the car, concerned about my pale and sweaty appearance. What's wrong, he asked. I couldn't share what I'd seen, fearing he'd think I was crazy. Nothing, I muttered. Just spooked. For a year, I slept with my lights on, convinced the werewolf would come for me. The experience left me shaken, and I avoided Davy whenever possible. Years later, when I started dating my husband, he wanted me to watch the Underworld movies with him. I don't know, I hesitated. Where would scare me, especially after that encounter? He pressed me for an explanation, and I shared my story, bracing for the skepticism. To his credit, he listened attentively. I believe you, he said. The encounter remains etched in my memory. It was a werewolf, and I know what I saw. I'll never know for certain what it was doing that night, if it was just passing through or if it was lurking about looking in people's windows. But one thing's for sure. I seen something that was not supposed to exist. And the way that it moved and the way it hid in town and as white as it was, it wasn't afraid of being seen. But one thing's clear. 
that moonlight encounter left me with a remember of a werewolf that wasn't supposed to exist is now sketched in my mind forever. I know what I've seen and I know they're real and this was not far from town. I believe they go in and out of town also. What do you think? There's a lot of reports of them being in town and out of town. I do believe they are in towns. So I believe they have made their way into towns and I believe that they are smart. And they're very intelligent and they're probably eating out of trash cans, getting stray cats and dogs. And they probably are window peekers. Uh, it reminds me of Scott Carpenter. His neighbors were saying he was having window peekers and we know it wasn't human. So that gives you something to think about. Thank you for watching guys. As always keep your head on a swivel. Don't be something's dinner. And we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. And I'll put that link in the description right now.